Hey, everybody. Happy Easter. I got mine. Easter. That's my, my Easter candy. Wait, what is that? Hold on. I'm going to make it. Lindor Neapolitan chocolates. Hold on. Wait, I got to see that up close. What? Neapolitan chocolates? Mm -hmm. you Where taste did you that? that? I got this from the grocery store. Well, I mean, I got that one, and I got this one, too. This one is not as good. It tastes good. It just doesn't taste like blueberry. Oh, blueberries and cream? Mm. Yeah, I don't know what it tastes like, but it ain't blueberry. <laughs> so that's my Easter candy. I made my own basket. You made your own basket? Mm -hmm. We were just talking about candy in the before we went live. Jenny's over there feeding the kitties. Lindor, I'm, send me a check. I'm doing a commercial for Lindor right about now, I guess. <laughs> Lindor truffles. Did everybody get their Trump Bible for Easter? <laughs> I, I love all the comedians saying, I'm surprised it didn't burst into flames. <laughs> or the sticky pages. The sticky pages. Yeah, that's where he uh, probably ejaculates all over it. The part, oh, God, where did that come from? <laughs> oh, Allie just sent me a text. Target sells those candies at Johnny show. <laughs> Control, I'll delete that. Sorry. <laughs> well, no, it's just, it's just, it's reminding me of a book that I just read yesterday. I finished it yesterday. I have never laughed so damn hard in my life. In my life i was cackling like a crazy person and peanuts like what the hell is wrong with you i'm like this book is ridiculous and we're when you said now. Opinion, i was yeah, like we're in aries now i have no filter now <laughs> i need you to find it ma'am <laughs> hi hi oh, i don't know where that came from we can't see you is your is your um oh, oh. hold on i can fix this she says confidently <laughs> So, <laughs> behave. We have guests. Oh, I got it. Like I didn't, ooh, I didn't get my Easter girl. candy. So I was showing Johnny my little Easter donut that I got because the what is it? Dunkin' Donuts was open. So I was like, Lena, here's Lena. There we are. Can you? No, see we me? still can't see you. You're a black screen. Oh no. Is your is your um camera on? Well, I thought so. There I haven't you are. turned it now off for six you. years. I don't know why it's on. <laughs> now. now we can see you. All right. Happy Easter. Well, it's Monday for you over there. Yeah. The We've future. totally moved past the resurrection. We're on the other side. Now, <laughs> what's, what's we're, we're in the where it's daylight for you too. It's daylight for us still out here. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. it's weird. We're sharing oh, suns in different ways. Camera. <laughs> I can see you guys. We can see you now, Lena. You're on now. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank God yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. We can see you. And I'm wearing my shirt from Johnny. Lord, have all the mercies. <laughs> <laughs> it's still held enough. <laughs> I treasure it. I'm no Givenchy, so all of my clothes that I've made for myself back in the day are all the letters have all fallen off. <laughs> oh, I hand wash it. Yeah, that was my problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got crumbs all over my table now from feeding the cat's treats. <laughs> oh, no. And, like, yeah, you were just talking about the Bible <laughs> where the pages stick together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you reckon? Was it made in China? I bet. Probably. And Midas Touch did a thing on the guy that's selling the Bibles. Mm. I guess he's doing it out of his garage or his truck or something like that. It's not even, yeah, I, it's the whole thing is just a, and, and here's the funny part. These morons are paying $60 yeah. for stuff that is public domain because that Bible has the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Federalist Papers, like all that stuff. It's like, 
Well, it's so we funny all over social see. media. I've been sharing uh, links to Becca with the uh, people reading excerpts from it. And this one girl, she was like, and Mary turned to Jesus and said, I don't really care, do you? <laughs> so like they're reading excerpts of the Trump Bible. <laughs> I mean, oh, it, that is so funny. He's never read any of that stuff. And then they I just saw I just saw a video today on Twitter of him. I, I think he's at some event for Easter. And he's on the stage and he's like standing with his hands in front of him. And they're saying the Lord's holy prayer, and he's all, yeah. <laughs> like his words aren't even going along with the prayer. It's like you can't fake it, dude. Like it's so. They pathetic. call us the choir when you forget the words. Say watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. It sounds like uh, a good tip. Good tip. Okay. <laughs> you know the sad part is okay. So there are a bunch of preachers, especially Southern Baptists. They teach this message in their sermons, especially Easter sermons, but they teach this message about the end times mm. to where the Antichrist, the false Christ, the person who lifts himself up as Christ, Donald Trump has compared himself twice now to Jesus. The person who lifts himself up as Christ comes along, he gains followers. Those followers follow him and do pretty much everything they say or he says because they believe in him and then he can convince them that he is either Christ or Christ-like. Then, for entertainment purposes only, then <laughs> he dies. He dies or he gets killed. The Antichrist, not Donald. The Antichrist. He dies or he gets killed. Then he comes back to life. And then they worship him literally as Christ. Then Christ comes back, beheads the Antichrist in front of everybody. Well, behead may be symbolic. And then the tribulation and the rapture. And so their new well, Christ. Well, schedule. Because <laughs> when, when he dies, then the war starts. And then when the war starts, jillions of people die, and then the Christ comes back, lifts all the dead, and then kills the Antichrist, and then the end times. And so hey, there you go. I just want to share that with you. Happy Thank Easter. You. I, I didn't know the story, so thanks for educating me, Johnny. Thank you. That's not the story. That's what the Southern Baptists were sharing. Well, what the Southern Baptists so there are people who now believe such a thing. And mind you, it's in the book that he was selling, I suppose, to. So he's if he is going to be portraying himself as Christ and Christ like, then you know that's half the battle already, I guess. Well, he went it, he's uh, Lee Greenwood, they've had seven wives and God knows how many mistresses, you know. So he, yeah, he that's who you want to buy a Bible from. Somebody's he was been on Truth Social just on a rant since like three o'clock this morning, comparing himself to Jesus and all this other stuff. It's like I think I'll, I'm going to do a video called Will the Real Christians Please Stand Up? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Please do. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. Because this isn't on if you believe in this framework, you know. Yeah. It's insanity. So happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to our <laughs> <country>. <laughs> the resurrection. <laughs> like Johnny, like Johnny said, where's the rapture? Take these people away. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I think it was on SNL because they did a cold open with Trump and his Bible. I think it was like I, I would have risen in less than three days. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's that's his mentality. Yeah. This guy could have better than <laughs> he, he'd be he'd be stuck to the cross because he couldn't find him, himself out of a wet paper bag with instructions, Jenny. That's <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, there's Lori. And I saw Autumn in the chat earlier. Hello. And Lisa's Lori. there and she's talking about the T-shirt and she says it should have one saying, Trump has all the heresies. You think? <laughs> well, he's committed. He's broken every commandment in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> but it doesn't except, stop them. Mm -mm. Except for honor thy father and mother. I think that's the only one he hadn't broken. Uh, he probably did, Jen. We just don't oh, know are about you it. kidding me, Jen? No. Remember, he didn't have any photos of his mother in the White House. There were 77 photos of Fred, Fred with him, Fred with this one, Fred with that one, and someone had to say, sir, 
you know, you should put a picture up of your mom. You know? mm -hmm. But he's embarrassed by her because she was a poverty-stricken immigrant. She doesn't fit his narrative. So she's never mentioned. What a, she's, what a, the, she's the Scottish roots in the family, isn't she? The why, he, why he wanted the golf course in Scotland, so to speak? Oh, look, it would have been a moment's fantasy. And they hate him in Scotland. Yeah, they do. Where is he not disliked? Other than, you know, well, I, I got to say this. I bet you Putin hates him. I bet you oh, totally. you know, chicken over there um, in, in North Korea hates him. Everybody hates him. They just Anyone who's him. met him yeah. hates him. Yeah. So I think he keeps MAGA in line because he never engages, right? You think he flies in to yeah. a rally, praise me, praise me, got to go. Yeah. So he never shakes a hand or engages with a mortal. You and know, anyone who has met him yeah. comes away going. If they, they, they got close enough to him to get a picture selfie with yeah. him, they'd smell him. They yeah. did say when after... um. After the elections, I think it was before January 6th happened, I forget who it was, you know, the people that were around him that eventually turned and started just dumping all the dirty laundry, that when he would go to the rallies, he would be disgusted and thankful that he didn't have to shake hands with those people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, and these clowns just think he's the greatest thing. Like, we want dictator Trump. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, there's no way in. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, well, if we had a democratic uh, dictator, they'd be, oh no, no fascism. Yeah, freedom, freedom. We want our freedom. And and what all these morons seem to forget is, look at all the countries with authoritarians. You know what they don't have? Guns. Y'all mm -hmm. love your guns so much, you you tend to forget <laughs> that little piece. That's true. Of, of information when it comes to dictators they're they're coming for your guns like they're they don't even know what it is that the reality of what it is that they want no. they think it's no, the, they're gonna carve out a little thing for me because i'm so special yeah you know more yeah. on but anyways any any announcements johnny what you got going on what we'll go around the room <laughs> it'll be quick i think by the look <laughs> not a thing are your classes are scheduled and done and all that stuff? Uh, we got one more week. That's it. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. Jenny, how's your seminar stuff going? Seminar, uh, you know, sold out. Uh, people are joining the waiting list in case I get a cancellation, um, which you can find on my uh, website. And um, reading appointments... Uh, as far as a seminar, we are going to do another set in the fall, but we'll announce it later, um, like mid-April, we'll announce it. Um, personal readings, there might be one or two appointments available at the end of July. Otherwise, August is available. JenLynTrue.com. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Lena? Anything with you coming up? Oh, it's too early in the morning for me. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's not cold here. Well, it kind of is. It's been cold and rainy since yesterday. So You're I'm, right in up. Yeah. I'm in my robe. Johnny, you don't even wear yours that I got you. My so niece is wearing it. <laughs> it's got a hood. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving the weather, but then tomorrow it's back to sunshine and I'm pissed. So... <laughs> I take the sun with you, damn it. So I have nothing new, um, nothing at all. So you guys ready? Is that yeah. enough? Or you? Okay. Let's go. Okay. So I'm just kind of bouncing around tonight. So if you feel the need to interrupt or ask further questions, please feel free to do so. So um, Ronna McDaniel was fired by NBC News. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, what idiot thought that was a good idea? Hmm. Whatever. But, okay, so now they're saying that um, Ronna McDaniel has hired uh, several lawyers yeah. and is reportedly 
outraged after she lost her job at NBC and is reportedly going to sue for defamation, which she reportedly believes led to her mental distress. So she's going, <clears throat> there's rumors that she's going to try to sue NBC for defamation, not for firing her, for defamation, because it caused her emotional distress. Oh, that emotional distress really hit hard in the two or three days. Usually <laughs> defamation is over a period of time. You know, the oh, no, because all the people her... on, on MSNBC, Rachel Maddow, uh, Chris... Um, Hayes, uh, um, what's Joe her name? Joey Reed, yeah, Joe Sardro, Christopher uh, Lawrence, like everybody was like, no, yeah, no. They but, all went hard. Mm -hmm. But mental and emotional distress is usually something you show over time. Like, okay, I was unable to get another job. And mm -hmm. like you know, the consequences of it is, is not like three days after you were let go, you know? <laughs> well, here's the problem. You walk into a room full of people who don't like you and they got upset that they said they don't like you. And here's... And spoke the truth about you meddled in the Wisconsin and, election. And here's the thing. They're not making it up. We have the, the indictments to show for it. <laughs> yeah. The Michigan election or wherever it was that she uh, called in the fake election. So, so... um. What's going to happen with her? Mm -hmm. I'm sure NBC has had to pay out whatever yeah. the contract, but this now she's going. Now she wants to sue them for defamation. NBC, if they wanted to hire a Republican to not and stuff, they they could have hired somebody like Ken Buck, who at least voted to impeach Trump over like the uh, Hutchinson. Jack, not January a known 6th. liar that has Wait. gaslighted America and then worked with an insurrectionist and a group Wait. of them. Nobody has a problem with them hiring, you know, a, a Republican. The, the issue do. is who they hired. Stop doing it. We, let's stop pretending that we're fair and balanced and we lean to the middle. No, it's left wing TV. Nicole Wallace, you already have a Republican in. Joe Scarborough calls himself an independent. He's still a Republican too. Michael Steele is still a Republican, too. You don't need any more than that. Let's quit pretending like this is a middle-of-the-road CNN type of thing. They got Fox News. We got MSNBC. That's where the liberals hang out. That's where you should put them. That's where you should leave them. They're corporate Democrats, but they're still Democrats nonetheless. And so let's stop with it. Quit hiring Republicans. Yeah. And that goes same for the presidents. Every time we get a Democratic president, they put somebody Republican in charge of something that they shouldn't be in charge of. Can we stop doing that? Stop this cross the aisle business until they start playing with us too. Yeah. But that's just me. I feel like I just drew cards on Trump. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's something here um, with the page of pentacles. I don't know if she has a book that she wants to put out too. That's going to be. A oh, they thing. always do. <laughs> but um, there's something worrying about that too. Cause this may, this is probably her catalyst to doing something else. You know, she was not going to be some full-time anchor on her own show, but she was going to use this to do something else. Nine of Swords, Page of Pentacles. She's very concerned about it now because this surprise comes out of nowhere and kind of knocks her down a little bit. Um, she does transition into something, but it's like mine. So back into her own people. So she's going to do something Republican related, maybe fundraising. I don't know, something like that. But in the end, this is only the beginning because there's the Ten of Swords, she loses a lot more than just this. So I don't know what's coming for you, but there's a whole bunch of swords. And actually, the Democrats are not the people you should worry about. Well, not only. And, and here's the thing. MAGA hates her. MAGA hates her. That's why they fired her. Regular Republicans can't stand her because of how she danced around to, you know, to appease the MAGA that hates her. And then Fox News is over there. They're so bad. Fox News, you love her so much. Why don't you hire her? Give her a job. And Give her a job. You hate her. You know, you feel so bad for her. She's secure. <laughs> this is this is her lifestyle and wanting to support it. Like, I'll go after him fast, yo, and deliver this message. Uh, she's going to be put in defense mode. But she's quite strong. She's just manipulating the media, um, you know, trying to bully here. She's going to have to give up. Um, you know, there's 
there's a crash and burn with her association with loser Trump, you know, and the, the lost elections and trying to corrupt um, the loss and trying to cover that up. She's, she's going to get asked a lot of questions. So she's facing treachery, but it's going to take some time here. So she's, she's not out of the woods yet, but this lawsuit is going nowhere. Yeah. You somebody for tell, for speaking the truth. It's not like they're making it up. Well, and no, enough that said, so. you know, why, why don't we do a class action suit against her for all the mental distress she caused us <laughs> with yeah. her big lie? And the country for trying to overturn an election. All of it. Mm -hmm. All of it. Yeah. Well, okay. same way. I've got, I've got the world here, so it's the end of a huge cycle because she was, none of us knew her name a couple of years ago. You know what I mean? But she's been hugely powerful as the fundraiser the guts of the machine for decades and suddenly she's out in the cold like you were saying becca magga aren't mad about her and do, do, do. She, i don't think she's caught up with this the real shock was of course her beloved antichrist plopping the daughter-in-law in her job that was the real <laughs> shock okay and she's still reeling from that right she wasn't quite sure how to move forward. She knew she could get at least a year's salary out of it, poor pet, you know, getting paid $300,000 to not go to work. I mean, there are worse problems. There mm -hmm. are worse problems. So it's not going forward as we speak. The moon, it's cloudy and stupid, and I think she would have probably just gone for the broken contract, cut losses and gone somewhere else. But this is fancy lawyers saying no go for defamation the problem is knight of wands um like we were just saying they just simply listed what she'd done and said that therefore is not defamation as i see it i'm not a lawyer but as i see it that doesn't actually count so exactly. i think she get pay out but not the defamation there's one little addition too is if you are claiming that this firing caused you emotional distress, you've lost two jobs in a few months. Mm -hmm. Can we now put the RNC in on that list or Donald Trump and Laura? And yeah, Laura exactly. Good because point. they fired you too. You may have been able to step down in public, but they fired you. Let's be real. They replaced you. Yes. And then you got over here and lost another job and now you're devastated. Yeah, and I think that will come out. And she should be cranky with them. And the yeah. whole thing is, she even changed her name to appease Donald Trump because he hates her uncle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she even, she changed her name for that clown who just discarded her like a, like a piece of trash. Yeah. And like Johnny said, these lemmings just keep lining up. Just keep lining up. Uh, it's <laughs> to me. So I do <laughs> the snake, the woman, the writer, lying woman, and then muse about her. If she brings this up to a court, it, it it's just going to bring up all the stuff that she's lied and betrayed about. So is mm. she going to win? No, no. It's just going to bring up even more stuff that we might not even know. So, exactly. I didn't even get money cards. Like there's not even a settlement out of court. Yeah, 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 yeah. None of us got a pentacle. <laughs> no. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to shake the hornet's nest here or play devil's advocate for a second. Um, a lot of people are really pissed off at um, what's his face, Merrick Garland right now, including his former professor, Lawrence Tribe, mm. who put out a tweet. Let me see here. Where is it? He was responding to someone else that was saying about the failures of, of Merrick Garland's DOJ. And he, Lawrence Tribe retweeted that tweet and he replied with, sadly true, a tragically weak attorney general pitted against the most dangerous coup attempt in our entire history. Mm -hmm. Garland is a nice, smart, and principled man, mm -hmm. but one wholly unsuited to this <laughs> job. I plead guilty for having under, overestimated him massively. That's Lawrence Tribe, his former professor. Um, that has so, to cut. <laughs> yeah, so I have, and, and it's not just him. There's just recently, 
Donald Trump posted, reposted on his social media platform a picture of a truck that the tailgate had the picture of Biden yeah. hogtied, shot and dying. And I was like, this freaking clown. And I have been desensitized. Anything that comes out of his mouth, I'm just, I'm completely desensitized at this point. That threat against our president is actually in violation of his gag order because he's not supposed to commit any crimes. And here's the thing. And here's the That's thing. The I will, I will admit, I am desensitized to this clown. You know, yeah. I was like, okay, people are blowing this out of proportion. Then I see Lawrence Tribe. Then I see um, Peter Stork. Then I see John Figluzzi. Then I see what's that lady's name? That Weissman and all of them. Weissman, like all the lawyers, Andrew Weissman, Neil Katyal, everybody. Like. We're a secret service. That's a threat. You need to throw him in yes. prison. And I thought they were overreacting, you know, because at this point, it's just like this effing clown can do whatever the hell he wants. He even incited a coup. And the mm -hmm. Supreme Court's like, nah, we're cool. Take your time. We're just going to sit mm -hmm. on this and decide if you have. Until after the next election. I mean, you know, so. And, and they were saying, like Jenny just said, in violation of his gag order, not only that, but in violation of federal law. Mm. It's a crime. It's a crime. You know? It's and then, a crime. Yeah, you know, so. Because bear in mind, Kathy Griffin was on the Intel, Incel, or whatever it was, the I something, the international police thing, where, where she held up the head thing. And yeah. then he put her on some international list to where she couldn't go outside the country, which means she couldn't tour since she's a comedian. That's something she needs to do. And every time she went to an airport, she had to be pulled out and searched and da 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 because she, she violated the and the Secret Service and Homeland Security and everything. Every single place she went, she had to go through that entire thing, all because she took that picture of the head of Donald Trump. And so he put her on that list. I forget what it's called. It's initials, but he put her on that list or something like that. I don't know. And he put her on that list and she couldn't leave the country for four years or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So, and then they had um, on, on Nicole Wallace's show the other day, Judge Ludig, which is a super conservative judge. And then they had another judge, I think it was on CNN, uh, another conservative judge appointed by Bush just saying, jail his ass already. He is tearing down the one thing that is holding him accountable. And su and surprisingly, the Supreme Court is happy to, to go along with the delay tactics, you know, and, and it was in reference to um, the judge in New York in his criminal trial in New York gagged him. Not even 24 hours later, he starts attacking the judge's daughter personally again again um, yeah he's been doing, it all times. doing it knowing knowing that somebody has already killed a judge's son because of him he knows what he's doing you know it's it's i don't know if you want to call it stochastic terrorism or what it is so he filed a motion with the judge saying you can't gag me for that your daughter works for this such and such company and this is just political speech i can say whatever the hell i want and it's just like so um alvin bragg filed a motion like yo you need to clear up your gag order and put yourself and your family and the family members of everybody else because he's putting targets on your backs you know and it's You're just like higher security yeah so i guess with all that said just to give you a a, a scope of of everything a lot of people pointing the finger at Merrick Garland because he drug his feet so long to appoint a special counsel to just give Trump so much time to delay 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 you know um and and no judge stepping up to jail or detain him pending trial you know it's just like it's insanity at this point so I guess my first question unless there's unless you guys can think of of another way to address it is, is he going to be detained pending trial for anything like between um i mean we're the whole secret service because everybody yeah. was saying secret service would have already arrested anybody else you know and 
Yeah, this is the problem generally that with Garland and the... Now, remember, how we forget, when Barr was Attorney General, how he sabotaged the entire Mueller investigation in one interview, remember when it was released and he just fumbled and bumbled and destroyed it, right, killed it in the crib. So they can intervene. Mm -hmm. We need a positive version of that destructive behaviour. They have enormous power and Garland's simply too procedural and decent for this time. He's not scary, right? That's the problem with Garland. He's not scary so that lawyers think, oh, you don't want to come up against Garland. Oh, what if that upset Garland? That's the problem. And exactly like you're saying, Lena, and I totally agree with what you're saying because Bill Barr would have already punched somebody in the face. I mean, hell, he threw Michael Cohen right back in solitary confinement because he refused to, to wave away his First Amendment rights. Yeah, That's how and I'm not so praising Barr. Bill Barr. Yeah. I'm just using that to demonstrate the power of the Attorney General. And if nothing else, like the whole alien cannon stuff, right, mm -hmm. he should have been behind the scenes in the car park having hardcore conversations with all the parties, yeah, you know, including the 11th Circuit, and go, I give you till Monday next week to do it that way or I'm just going to lift up or something like that, you know. He has the power. It's just, he just doesn't know what to do with it. Thank you, Minnesota. Nice. So is but anything he... going to see him remain? Yeah, is, is he going to be detained pending trial for anything, for anything? I mean, because at this point, he's taking a, a, a torch to... Mm. There is a possibility, <laughs> and that's as best as I got. The Seven of Cups is a card of confusion. It's a card of options, too, to where you do have options, but coupled with this in the negative, mm. the Seven of Pentacles, we are in a constant state of assessing. Let's see what to do. Let's see what to do. We're just constantly staring at something, information, data, information. We're constantly staring, constantly staring. Do something. Even if it's the wrong thing, do something. At least you have moved forward with something that you could possibly go back on. But, but do something. This is constant assessment. Um, the problem, though, the Empress brings something new, which means he's going to do another thing, and then you're going to take that into account, too. This whole thing about him being president and there's no precedent for punishing a person in the way that you should, should be out the window when a person constantly breaks the law. And is testing the limits. Yes. Goading, just goading, goading. Yes. What are you going to do? Not the whole Fifth Avenue shooter financial. person. Financial. Sorry, John. It's like, it's that, that comment of his, if I can shoot a person on Fifth Avenue and nothing happens, it becomes more and more true. It ends in the Six of Swords. And Absolutely. so there's something that they could do, but it is the minimum of what they will do. And the clear Six of Swords is transition, but it carries a lot of baggage. And so it's the minimum. And the thing is, we've already saw from the Letitia James side of the house of civil, and even with, with E. Jean Carroll, finding him doesn't work. Even if he doesn't have the money, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Throw his ass in Alcatraz for a couple of weeks. You know, like, I mean, come on. You know? What you got, Jack? I, I get justice on the bottom here. There, There is some sort of constriction or, or jail time um, to burden him. To Johnny's point, like, they're assessing, assessing, assessing. But this is in the near future. Like, they're going to wrap this up pretty quickly. I'm getting all this assessing and do something finally. Um, I'm also getting a lot of um, um, sanctions or fines, you know, like money, money, money. Hit him in his po pocketbook. Um, he's he's going to do, you know, something else. I, I, I feel like they're going to move him somewhere uh, where he can't say as much uh pending trial but he's going to say something else uh, you know to johnny's point he, giving birth to something else new this is also something new he's going to say something else that's really really corrupt that is 
going to get them to move uh, on him? And I, I get a yes. They're going to they're going to move on him eventually. They're going to move on him like a bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, like that had a creeper he is. Yeah, it's He's funny because I asked my pendulum this question um, yesterday. Last night I was messing around with my pendulum and I was getting a yes. I said, I'll believe it when I see it because I yeah never totally it's yeah. so hard, isn't it? Yeah. Look, he's a burden on the legal system. You that this is the ongoing problem. No one wants to be the first one to do this thing. Um. So he walks away stealing American democracy is what he's stealing yeah. here, right? Biden, I think, has possibly spoken to Garland and others being too nice too. Oh, well, this is a very big step. Oh, well, we don't want to create a precedent. Oh, well, you do what you think best, knowing Garland will do nothing. There's Trump sitting pretty, but I pulled one more card. He's not as comfortable as he's pretending to appear. In other words, that there's got to be a 10 point <laughs> at some point. You know, he's done a million and nine. We want yeah. the million and 10, please. And they might have to be lateral. Why not send him to Camp David for a week with no internet? In his <laughs> Why? Room? He's got a golf uh, course. <laughs> no, no, he's not allowed out of his room and there's no internet. Mm. And he's a city guy. He would hate being it. Nothing to hear but squirrels. Mm -hmm. That would be hell. They could be creative. Yeah. You don't have to jail him. We're just putting him in retreat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Camp, Camp David's for sitting good. president, so Biden does yeah. uh, take his family like there. Said, so. Alcatraz is vacant. There ain't nobody there. You don't even have to take Secret Service because he'll be yeah. all by himself. Oh, nope. Nobody's on Epstein there. Island. Let's put see. it up to some kind of use. <laughs> I mean, There's a bunch of people and, and Selena's right. point, yep. He's already gotten somebody's child murdered because the person that went yeah. to that judge's house was going to kill her, and it was her son that answered the door, and her son was the one that got murdered. Yeah. So what are we like Lena said, what are we waiting for? And yeah. and here's the thing: having your brown shirts go in and kill prosecutors and judges and all that other stuff, that doesn't make the trial go away. It no. might delay it a day or two or a week or a month, but it's still going to happen with yeah. additional charges because you got somebody killed. You know, yeah. so it, it's just somebody just do it already just for the for our freaking sanity, because yeah. there's plenty of people with less felony counts than that man oh, sitting yeah. in prison right now because yeah. they can't make bail. Yeah. And he's out there with 88 charges because they got dropped down from 91 to 88 charges, just breaking even more laws. You know, like I just, I get, I get, yes, um, losses and endings, but there's delays. And then, yes. So it's almost like, it's almost like if Judge Mershon takes on what um, Alvin Bragg's office is saying, here's all the evidence add yourself and your children to it, it's almost like he's going to want to appeal that to cause even more delays. Oh, this is political speech. No, it's, you're you're trying to get people unalived is what you're doing. You're, you're intimidating the judge. You're intimidating the jury. You're intimidating the witnesses, you know, but he's, he's like a slimy, slippery fish. And the justice system just doesn't know how to, doesn't know or doesn't have the balls, like Johnny was saying, to to just do what needs to be done. Because if it was any one of us, we would have been in prison a long time ago. But also, let's go back for a minute to the locker up chant. <laughs> right now, that should have been knocked on the head day one. Instead, it became a trademark with General Flynn, you know, mm -hmm. leading the, the choir. So he was happy to lock her up, and you better believe if for whatever reason this guy gets in, they'll, the jails will be full all over D.C. and everywhere else. So it's Muggins territory. It's really dumb to not act. Yeah, well, I can get it on a certain level to where, like, they keep saying witch hunt. 
like the hunting for witches type thing to where you went and prosecuted, persecuted a person on circumstances and circumstantial evidence, not proof of anything, but you seem to be this way. And so we're going to bring the law down on you. That's not this. I know from our standpoint, we think, what's the, what's, what are we waiting for? Do this, do that. He's been saying this, he's been saying, you have to build a case though. We can't just go by what we see on TV, but you can't tell me also at the same time, you don't have enough to just do it already. <laughs> like I, this is not a circumstantial thing, like hunting for a witch. This is a literal, he did this. So you should do that. The end. I don't care what he used to do four, six, seven years ago. Or or that he's going to appeal it on some bullshit and then take it to the Supreme Court so that they can. It's the same playbook. It's the same. We've seen this happen a million times. Because and like Johnny it says, it's not like for Liz, Liz, Cheney, even, Liz Cheney even called out SCOTUS for buying into Trump's delay tactics and stuff. But I'm still pissed. Like Jack Smith, I think his very first indictment should have been for treason. I, I'm like, it was cut and dry. Yeah. And yeah. I, I would have been. And also, old. that should have been bought six weeks after January 6th. Yeah. As yeah. treason. Yeah. And the nation would have got behind it. And the MAGA files would be jumping up and down, but they'd go, oh, oh. But how long did it take? We wouldn't be would sitting here him. now if that acted. And, and this is part of the reason why people are so angry at Merrick Garland right now yeah. because of all of the delays to the federal cases. Yeah. Because he, the, the time that it took for him to, to appoint a special counsel. Now, Jack Smith worked very, very quickly. He did his job. But he, Jack Smith did his job, but it was people are really upset. Not, the legal minds, the, like Lawrence Tribe, <laughs> you know, like that said, you waited too long. And now look where we're at. We're we're about to go into an election. You know, Donald Trump is trying to frame this as they're taking me to court in the middle of my campaign. No, no, you're campaigning in the middle of your court. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, These you know, guys off us 14 days after January 6th, right? Well, Merrick Garland a little bit later because he had to be confirmed by the Senate, right? So, so February 1st, whenever he came in. He should have immediately appointed a special counsel. Mm -hmm. There should have been, to Lena's point, charges within the first six yeah. days because yes. all the evidence was on TV. Yeah. We He's all thought you didn't We're have to strong. interview anyone to write up an indictment for treason. I'm sorry. There, it, the evidence was already there. I don't care if you talk to Meadows and everybody else. We all saw it. Yeah. And it's and exactly to Lena's point. I don't I don't remember the time frame between you know the 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 Merrick Garland being appointed attorney general and when it was announced for the special counsel. But I'm thinking it was like well over a year, year and a half. Over a year. You yeah, know, it, when the a lot of Republicans, there, it's a lot of Republicans were pissed off when they saw what happened on January 6th. and yeah. it's like. They would have been behind indicting him. Everyone would have with the momentum of that moment, but they let it go, and then the gap was filled by all the counter narrative, and now here we are. All the yeah. But so, they've let America down. Merrick Garland has let America down. The judicial system has let itself down. And and there, I forget the guy's name, the other judge, not Judge Ludig, but the other judge that was on CNN. And I don't watch CNN. I just happened to catch a clip of it on um, YouTube. And he was saying, this guy is beyond testing our judicial system. He's close to breaking it at this point, you know, that's, and it's that's just not like, an exaggeration. No. no. You know, and 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 I'm on the point of breaking be, democracy, you know, every, he, he breaks everything. Uh, I'm And I'm trying to be a bit skeptical about you know that sort of stuff like oh they're you know this is just um sensationalism for mainstream media this that and the other thing but when you start seeing a bunch of previous judges and a bunch of legal experts and legal professors and prosecutors all saying the same thing it starts to ring true like doj where the hell are you at at this point you know yeah and and another and this, thing yeah and, you know, and because I, I understand that we can all get caught up on what's going on in the news because they sensationalize everything so bad, you know, to the to the point where it's just, 
you know, oh my God, the sky is falling. But after watching it for so long, and then you got the clown Eileen Cannon over there. Mm. Oh, well, I'm just going to let the jury decide what the law is. Yeah, I mean, now back to her for a minute, because this is the other big problem, is many independent voters, how you could be undecided in today's America is a mystery to me, but many are, millions are, and many of them have said over and over, I won't vote for a convicted felon. I support due process, but if he's convicted, I will not vote for him. So they've now just thrown out millions and millions and millions of votes. Yeah. For that. So they sabotage the electoral process in the worst possible way. They are complicit. And and the whole thing, too, is that we're all, by law, by law, guaranteed a speedy trial. Well, if he's so innocent, why the hell does he keep delaying, 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 delaying? And the Supreme Court's like, yeah, that's cool. We'll delay it. We'll, we'll think about looking at your case in August, maybe. You know. The one thing that is held up, though, in our judicial system is all the the election lie lawsuits. Every, yeah. All of those cases, you know. That's Eastman true. and Clark are getting disbarred. Giuliani's, you know, get, getting disbarred. Like Cheeseboro, they're all like. So everybody under Trump is facing our judicial system is holding up with them. It's just mm -hmm. not holding up with Trump. And it's that's crazy. what I don't understand, Jen, because Trump is stupid. Yeah. He's stupid. <laughs> all the people around him, the John Eastman, the Rudy Giuliani's, all those people. They're facing the consequences because it was their ideas at the behest mm. of the clown with the dead possum on his head. Yeah. <laughs> so why them, but not him because of the privilege that he was a former president, a shit one? Like, yeah. I don't mean, explain it to but me like I'm stupid because I don't understand. Absolutely. If it's easy to apply it to these people, you should just cut and paste and apply it to this. But guy. also, they still have privilege as wealthy white people, too. Yes, correct. They're, they're losing their law licenses, which is devastating if your identity is being a lawyer. None of them are going to jail. Well, Eastman is now, but the yeah. others aren't. Yeah, well, Peter Navarro is in prison right now for, for defying a congressional subpoena. He's in, yeah. I think he's in prison right now for defying, you know, which is... That's right. Mm. But not for this other stuff. So even though they're getting convictions, they're giving them all deals, you know. Tell me who yeah. else gets to wheel and deal in the poker club of going to court. I just, I just don't understand. By not doing anything, you're setting a president to not in that saying this is okay we're just not gonna you know we're just gonna and hope the next also, time it happens it's like a fatal dependence on history it's like i think americans as an outsider i think i can say mm -hmm. this that um are convinced from birth that america is the greatest power and this superpower and is invincible and no i don't have to vote because I live in the greatest democracy, someone else will vote, um, can't conceive of the country actually falling over. And it's and all been... not just lose traction in the world. It can just fall off a cliff into yeah. Banana Republic land. Yeah. And, and it it's all be been engineered. Things. It's all been engineered by foreign adversaries, by getting Trump elected by the complacency of elected officials that know better that are yep. just going along with it for their own, you know, it, it's just, the whole thing is a mess, but going back yeah, to very the, cheap, it, we could point to Russia or, you know, other parties mm -hmm. that were invested in destabilizing America far cheaper than conventional arms. Yeah. Cheap as and cheap. a war and a war, you know, and a war. So, so um, the, the going back to, Trump reposting that image on his mm. failing social media site. First question I have, and then we don't even have to throw cards on this, but if it is such a crime to do that, then why is the owner of that vehicle not been apprehended? And I'm not saying this to the defend. Image, so it was, I've had it described, but is it a real vehicle? I think so. It's a truck. Oh, it and might the be building. CGI or something. Apparently, that that 
truck that was photographed a while back. Um, I think I saw like in a funeral procession or something like um, was photographed. I can't remember where it originated, but it's a real truck. Because I remember when I when I was seeing all the stuff before I started seeing all the legal minds saying, you know, this is enough. This is a bridge too far. Arrest him. In my mind, when I was still being skeptical, I'm like, yeah, but. And not in his defense, he's just re reposting an image of an online person. What about the person that's driving the vehicle, the owner of the vehicle that put that on his car? Mm -hmm. So does that person have yeah. the same, like you would think, car. right? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, Lisa and Chad is saying it, it was seen on Long Island by herself. Oh, oh. So it is in the vehicle. So it's not yeah. an AI image or anything like that. So no, okay. So so then why is the driver of that vehicle not been knock knock FBI or Secret Service or whoever the hell, you know? And second of all, okay, you take care of the the owner of the vehicle. A former president is like, yeah, this is cool. Without saying a word, he's letting people know, yeah, this is cool. This is what I want. So where the hell is Secret Service. Yeah. Like, <laughs> let's look at the Secret Service. Yeah. Why? Are, I think that's more interesting. So, are they being told not to act on these things, or are they all Trumpists and think it's great, or what is going on with the Secret Service? I. Man. Shall we read on that? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Here I am taking Keep over your show. In. Sorry, doll. <laughs> Keep going. And it's not like, oh, we're just speculating. Dude, the guy led a violent insurrection against the capital of the United States. I don't think we're like exaggerating at this point. He tried and to have some real president. threats to Pence. Yeah. That threat was real. They went down the wrong corridor, it was all over. He tried to have his vice president unalived. I don't think we're, I don't think, you know, it's just a figure of speech. And we read on this a couple of weeks ago, Johnny, I think it was on your channel. And you and I were getting kind of like the same thing about he was hoping something really bad would happen, like unalived or whatever, because that would take the threat of the competition away. And here we are. <laughs> Here we are. I don't even know if I can read these cards. They're so weird. Mm. We're going to say information gathering is over. Ace of Swords, Ten of Swords. So they have the information they need. The Eight of Cups and the Nine of Swords. The threat is not realistic enough, I suppose. Um, what Trump did to Kathy Griffin was more petty because he she was not going to go at him. But I don't think that they see a problem enough in this person. Strength and Five of Cups. They sort of it's it's not it's not something to act on, or it's not something that they need to act on because there's no threat. I'm kind of getting the same thing. Like something is getting ready to change though. Thank you, Alwanza and Judy. Um, you know, this is a vehicle and they're trying to get to calmer waters, but there's something like this wasn't finished. You know, this this was a threat. It was obviously a death threat. It's pretty strong, but they're looking at it as this guy's crazy. So um in America, so, where we're trying to, to grow some unity again and everything, they're laying low on it, is what I'm getting. Now, if something comes up in um, social media posts or messaging or something that's very direct threat, then you got an indictment. Um, but I right now, they're just looking at it as, this guy's a little crazy. <laughs> So, so the, you know, here's the thing. I, I don't know much. I had to ask Johnny about it. 
who P. Diddy was. I don't, I didn't even know. <laughs> P. Diddy, run for president. I mean, that's how you get out of everything at this point. Just, yeah. just, run, for just run for president. You know, what'd you get, uh, Nina? Well, I read broader on the Secret Service. What mm -hmm. are they doing about all these threats to judges, kids, and everything else? Where are they at yeah. as an organization? And I got, they're trying to hold on to their conventional values of what they're supposed to be doing, but they're out in the cold in terms of leadership. Oh. Look, Howling at the Moon, I think it's a very split organisation. This is my vibe. You know, I, I think it's very confusing because we know all government agencies are pumped with pox Pox News, yes. <laughs> 24-7. Um, you know, so if you're a serving soldier, it's very, it's not easy when you're every day when you're eating your, your crispies, you know, like mm -hmm. you pump for this. And I think they're literally confused on the ground. Queen of Cups, I need help. Who is the Queen of Cups in this story? Secret Service, what is their problem, Queen of Cups? Well, in the absence of anything better, its emotion is clouding what's going on. They're waiting for direction. That's my vibe from this. They really want their top people to step in and say, we need to do this. This is the boundaries. This guy's mad. We'll let this one go. This one's serious. It's our job to do this. You know, I don't think they're getting proper direction. I mean, so it's kind of like... Thing. In the January 6th trials, okay, finally the peanut butter boys and Oath Creepers, the top guys, got charged with sedition. Everybody should have been charged with sedition. Every single person that was, was breaking in. Those outside on the grounds, okay, fine, you know, whatever, and, unless they were uh, assaulting police and stuff. But everybody that was charged should have been charged with sedition. That's what they were there for. Yeah. I, I get that he's a, uh, where's the secret service? Um, he's a passionate liar that tells a lot of lies, a lot of lies, a lot, a lot. The moon. Mm -hmm. A lot of lie, uh, a lot of lies, as many lies as there are fish in the sea. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and he's very duplicitous. He can go either way. He's always skating, slippery. This would be a slippery person. This is an, these two are action cards, mm -hmm. the fish and crossroads. So very slippery, hard to get a hold of. So even if he does put out a threat, he's just going to backpedal and make it into something else. Oh, well, you didn't, or he skirts right, right up to the line. Mm -hmm. Do you see what, kind of like what you yeah. were saying, Jenny, like right up to the line without crossing that line, you know? And then if he crosses it and he gets caught up, then he challenges and lies, you know, like it, it's just... Just because the li lying is now normalized and lying, we're just immune to it now. I, I, that there's, there's something Biden should campaign on. Make America honest again, because this is just. Well, he's, he's gotten much better at throw ever since the state of the union. He's yeah. directly, you know, calling out Trump. Um, and throwing shade, you know, he, he's already addressed the Bible and stuff. It's like he's he is doing what all Democrats should have been doing all along. Mm. He's calling him out. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it's hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not running short of topics. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not running short on any topics, Lena, at all. <laughs> so, so I guess. Eileen Cannon has just decided she gave orders on a hypothetical, on a hypothetical. And it, according to the hypothetical that she wants Trump's lawyers to discuss and Jack Smith to defend is basically the jury deciding what the law is in the classified documents case. And at this point, I've, I've seen a couple of judges some of them are saying go straight to the 11th circuit right now and overturn her. <laughs> judge Ludig is the only one that said, well, it's very difficult to overturn a judge. And I'm thinking maybe he's not 
up to par or maybe he's not up to date with that whole situation. But he did it in the he fall. Started, Jack Smith went, you know, over the special council. Already. You know, so maybe Judge Ludig wasn't up to date on that part of the story because he was saying that it's very hard to overturn judges. But everybody else and all other prosecutors are ringing the alarm bell saying the fix is in. She's just going yeah. to dismiss the case. And then they yeah. can't bring the case again because it's double jeopardy. Yeah. And if you don't act now, then, you, then you're facing double jeopardy, even though the judge played stupid to do Trump's bidding. If that, yeah. you know, so um, here's what I don't get. Yes, it's hard to overturn a judge. It's very rarely done. I'm sure it's really difficult. So what? <laughs> Do <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Just to, because she came in with whatever. It's very it was. rare that we charge as a former president. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you've got to start doing these things for the first time more often, get better at it. But she came in with five minutes' experience, and I'm really not exaggerating. I think she had 27 court hours or something. Now, A, she should not have been in the roulette wheel, right, to decide judges for the biggest case in America. She should not have been on the short list. However, she was. Her number comes up. That's the system. Okay. Immediately with anyone who was under a 1,000 hours in court, anyone who was under five years' experience, et cetera, there should have been a caveat put in right then by the Attorney General. We are giving you this case, Miss Cannon. However, you will be vigilantly observed and do do do, do. It, wouldn't be the, it wouldn't be DOJ. It would be her boss, the 11th Circuit, because they've already... Yeah, but they, it goes one. up. And if they yeah, couldn't, okay. order, it goes up. That's my point. They don't want to make a decision, fine, the next one has, the next one has, and no one is making these decisions. So 11th Circuit know how bad she is. Oh, the yeah. 11th Circuit has the power. Will they do it? I don't know. I'll talk to you in 2025 and we'll see and, how she's going. And, and, and the thing is, at this point, it's like, can the 11th Circuit intervene or does it take Jack Smith to go to them? Whatever. To for help. You know, because it's just I like he has, has an or not, or he's held off. I'm not sure how that works. If if they can just step in, or if oh no, sorry, look at this. Rose what? Blue says Clarence Thomas oversees the 11th. The 11th uh huh. Yeah, we all know that. Um, the, the thing is, Jack has to bring something up, just like he did with the special master and all that, all the problems back in the fall. Um, to, to get things shut down. So he's got to bring it up. They they can't just look at her and what she's doing, which is a shame. I mean, and think about it. It's kind of like SCOTUS. SCOTUS can, can't can just look at a case and say, oh, that's wrong. Let me step in. You know, yeah. they have to wait till it's brought. So so is Jack Smith going to go to the 11th Circuit? Because she's already, sig she's already signaling that, well, I'm just going to let the jury decide, even though that's not the law. <laughs> You know, I mean, this lady isn't even fit to be the freaking dog catcher. Yeah. She's not smart enough to do this on her own. I'm totally convinced somebody in the Federalist Society is feeding her how to do this. How to yeah. do it. Yeah. And, and She's not smart enough. And remember the, the stuff that I shared with you, Jen, that she screwed up a case so bad that she got lucky that the, the d defendant pled guilty because she forgot to swear in the jury. That's right. You know. I mean, we're talking basic stuff here. But if Clarence Thomas is in charge of the 11th Circuit. What's Trump going to do? Take it to the Supreme Court? Oh, you can't. I'm asking. For stealing classified documents and hiding it from the FBI. And I'm know. asking, is Jack Smith's team going to take this to the 11th Circuit now? Not yeah. wait for something else to happen now. They're saying, the, they're saying in the chat that two of her law clerks quit. Yes, she said law clerks quitting already. Oh, oh my God. Look, I love this car. This is Eileen as we sit here. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, wait, put that up closer, Lena. So this from is far away, it looks like Wonder Woman. Tied I know. Up. Don't you love it? But the swords are coming from everywhere, and she's dodging the sword. She then gets the Empress, 
Um, well, the question being Jack Smith and Doo Doo. Empress is expanding everything. Look, they know she's poor at what she does. They know that with this sort of thing. Will he do it? He could with this Queen of Wands do it. But then out come whistling as they go, yet another crossroads decision to be made. And now I've heard about Clarence. I have no optimism about the 11th Circuit. But we'll see. Surely they can outnumber it, him and muscle they've up. They've done the right thing in the past. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because her stuff was so it. completely not even based on reality that they were like, uh, what the hell? So and she was leaving witnesses exposed to being intimidated and all that stuff. She's mm -hmm. seriously bad, not just right wing, not just Trump friendly, seriously bad. You know. But more talk, more decisions that's not made. Oh, God, I need a cup of tea. <laughs> What's getting, Johnny? Um, reluctantly, maybe. <laughs> the four of cups this is like the reality you have to accept type thing you don't want to because you know it may for him it may be more difficult than it sounds than just going to the eleven circuit it may be something that it exposes the case to something or there's some some sort of legality thing there with the justice and the magician to where it's bigger than just the sentence, take it to the 11th circuit type thing. Um, the Eight of Pentacles, there's details in the word of warning that make this more difficult than it is. And so it's more of a headache, but and to Lena's point, okay, so what? Do it. Yeah, do like, it. None of this is supposed to be easy. I mean, it's, it's a federal, anyway. There, then there is the Seven of Pentacles and it ends in the Knight of Cups. So there is an offer once again to sort of do the right thing or reluctantly he will have to move past her. But it ends in the Knight of Cups. Though. So there is still this trying to play within the box type thing. And then when you have no choice, Four of Cups. But the thing is, the box that she keeps building them are the ones that Trump's giving her instructions. Trump has his lawyers file motions or whatever, basically giving her instructions. This is what we want. And she's like, okay, government, it's your point to prove while the defendant is, is wrong. You know, like. Yeah, I, I get Jack Smith is really assessing all the details of how to constrict her. And he, you know, steadily she's, she's provided all the evidence that he needs. Um, he is looking at his options. But I get a big old yes that he will go to the um, 11th Circuit here soon. This to me is like in the next uh, four to six weeks. Um, I think he will to try to get her removed. And he's got strength on that case. I think pack her bag, she's going to have to leave. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if she's gone by uh, May or end of April. So I asked, well, let's go with Jen's reading. I love that. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Because, <laughs> I mean, at this point, she's just making sure. You know, and the Midas touch had, uh, you know, uh, Ben Micellis and all them had really good theories that she's just blocking the calendar so Trump can't be put on trial at all before the election. Because all she's she's not setting trial dates. She's just blocking the calendar so yeah. nobody else can, can schedule. Yeah. And then within that time frame, she just keeps fucking shit up, you know? So I asked, will the 11th Circuit overturn canon? Small knowledge of the law. So that's it. <laughs> Small knowledge with the book of the law. That's a yes. Like you, you don't, you don't, you don't was, understand how this works. Like I was asking my pendulum. I was getting a yes by May. And so I asked by the end of April. And it's like right around. So right around like end of April, 1st of May. Yep. So, um, do you, can can you guys um, go ahead? I, I need to go downstairs and feed the feed the little monster back here. The hound. Penny. No, Elena. Look. <laughs> hey, Francie. Oh, who's grown a pile? Yeah, I have to go feed her before she eats me. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Becca, you have the questions. We don't have a question. 
Yeah, throw us a question before you <laughs> go. First, okay, so there's like a whole bunch on here. Um, um, the latest, you, if you guys want to take this one, the latest uh, failed um, Biden impeachment hearings when they had Lev Parnas and that other clown on there. Lev Parnas was dropping names left and right of people, active active members of Congress. One of them was sitting on the panel. Pete Sessions was sitting on the committee. So are any of those people in the House, in the Senate, any of that stuff, are any of them going to be held indicted or, or anything? Picked out of Congress. Mm -hmm. And if you, I'll, I'll try to be quick to feed her. And Yeah, this, it all starts with, will DOJ reopen the investigation into Ukraine. I mean, there may be a statute of limitations or something with it. Yeah. Uh, it's what got Trump impeached the first time. Um, but it, you know, the fact that they're trying to use it to impeach Biden now is just insane. Mm. I'm not sure how to ask this because I, I don't know what the yeah. statute of limitations, because that was like in 2019. Ask, um, specifically on him and then we could branch if we needed to. On, uh, on Lev Parnas, I want to know if his testimony has a ripple effect. Does it? Does it mean anything? It's nice to say he did this, he did this, he. But you have to build a case around these mm. things. Mm. So right now they're just he said, she said accusations. Where's your papers? Where's your evidence? Where's your da da da? Yeah. So what ripple effect did it have? Is there going to be a case for some guy, some girl, some mm. group? Some yeah, he's, no, he's openly no. said on uh, on uh, podcasts and things that. Yeah, these Republicans are still working with Russia. You know, they're still actively working with Russia. And remember when Lev was arrested, there was another Russian, and then we never heard Igor, sure. and we sure. never heard of him again. He got prosecuted too, but he's he's not as vocal. I, I, I think he's probably more afraid for his life that mm. these guys will come after him. Um, you know, Michael Cohen, Lev Parnas, they have to have security now. Mm -mm. They can't, they're not just doing this voluntarily and no. Uh, mm. Lev Parnas's information, will it have ripples? Mm. Lev did a, uh, a conversation with Michael Cohen the other day, and I found it really interesting towards the end of it. He actually said, you know, if Trump had taken care of us, we might not have flipped on him. I mean, he openly said it. Totally. He, you know, totally. Totally honest. Like, he's like, yeah. you know, if he had pardoned yeah, me after I got put rolled. in jail, yeah, like he, he, like he did. A uh, phone call, bit of a money, we would have shut up. Yeah. yeah. yeah like, if it, like they, you know, dealt with the Manafort and stuff. He said, we probably would have shut up and we wouldn't have been sitting here That's and telling Absolutely him. right. I, I, I had to applaud him for being honest about it. Like he taken and Johnny's always said it. You should never have done that to Michael Cohen because you created the enemy. <laughs> exactly. And Michael Cohen, same way. If if Trump had never gone for president, was still there, he'd still be there in the car park threatening single mothers. You know, like so. <laughs> you know. Wow. It is opening up a can of worms. I, I, I'm getting like on the whole network here, uh, legally looking into all their corruption. Big yes, right here in the near future. Like this is going to grow. Um, there's there's going to be some people possibly imprisoned over this crap. So we haven't heard the last of it yet. It's going to gain steam. Yeah, and he his reading kicks off with the star, which is my best of America card. So this is going to actually rock the country. Page of Swords, Queen of Swords, he has the legal stuff that's necessary because, because he was a relative underling, but a high-placed underling, <laughs> he had it all. They're the ones who see everything come and go. Right. That was that they was something else. That, Sorry, Jim. That was something else he brought up in his conversation with Michael Cohen. He goes, "How many more documents could we provide yes. these people? Like they, he's look, got documents. He has the emails, the texts, the paperwork. He has it all. I'd say with what you just said, this is him handing it over, and I'm sure he 
was glad to get rid of it. And what was his last card? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. So it's top <laughs> and tail here. His stuff is explosive, literally, because it, it was the Giuliani, Russia, the getting Trump in, all that backyard dealing, back channels, sneaking money in and out. It's the lot. He was the bag man. He knows the lot. Um, yes, because he illuminated a lot of stuff here with the sun and the nine of wands. There is a lot of strain put on someone. And the knight of pentacles, this is something that is going to take a little bit of time, though, because there's like the gathering of information. So whatever it was that he communicated to Lev Parnas, the eight of wands, whatever he communicated does have a ripple effect. Yes, there are two women here that you may see them publicly next or may hear of them publicly next in relation to information that he shared. Um, there's also a, a teamwork aspect too with the chariot. And him, Igor Giuliani, is how we heard of those two in the mm -hmm. first place. There's something wrong there, of course it is. Mm -hmm. But there's something wrong there. That becomes more of an issue than it used to be, too, with the chariot cart. Um, and it ends in the nine of swords. So does this have a ripple effect? Yes, it does. There's mm -hmm. actually something that will come up with. It's not mm -hmm. just a new story. Mm. But no time soon. I'm please before the darkness takes me. I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> I just want to see Marjorie Taylor gang green with her three toes and Jim Jordan with his carnival barking big old ears, you know, like just please, just for the love of God. Yeah. So I I was I was wondering if you guys wanted to look at Mike Lindell because he broke. Oh mercy, that oh baby. He got a hit, didn't he? Oh, there's they're they're saying they're saying um he's being evicted from his warehouse because he owes over two hundred thousand yeah. dollars in unpaid rent and then he owes fox news more than eight million dollars in unpaid ad fees oh. and his lawyers have they're dropped stuck in that warehouse he doesn't have the money to move it somewhere else <laughs> And then his lawyers uh, have dropped him as a client over millions of dollars in unpaid legal fees. <laughs> but he's still a supporter. I'm getting, I'm getting the checkbook out. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute, Mike. I got you, bro. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Order a special Bible while you're there. You'll so. <laughs> get one in prison eventually. <laughs> oh, there's an idea. That my Camp David concept, and he has to spend the weekend alone with only a Bible. Mm -mm -mm. Dumbass box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so God. right. Because you had millions of dollars, something some people will never have but deserve, you got it. And then yeah. you spent it all on a person who doesn't know your name, doesn't appreciate what you did, and you still tried to do it, even though he still doesn't care. And you're wrong constantly. At this point, you should have gave it up when you had five. And like I said, he had $10 million. By the time you got to eight, I should have said, you know what, this is expensive and it's not working. Yeah, you not working. Five, this is expensive and it's not working. You got to zero. Now you're in the negative. <laughs> and and homeboy over there ain't gonna help you because he ain't got it either. <laughs> <laughs> both y'all broke. A beggar telling where to, another beggar where to get bread, but you're both blind and you have no sensories. So it's um, like you don't know where you're going, he don't know where he's going. He you you could have gave him, you know, $83 million probably at some point, and he probably would have shook your hand at least. You spent all of your money, and he doesn't yeah. even care. And tell me he's not being divorced. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy that made a fortune selling lumpy pillows on Infobot. Yeah. See, he has some skill. Yeah, he, you know, he sold lumpy pillows. You know what we used to do in, in the retail world? When it was your birthday, people used to give you money 
and then you used to pin it to your chest. That way, other customers would come in and they knew it was your birthday, and then they'd give you more money. Uh, there you go, Mike Linda. Happy <laughs> 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 Easter. I mean, this guy, this guy's up Shit's Creek without a paddle, and but he's still going on these news networks, OANN and whatever. I have proof. I have proof. I have proof. It's like, oh my God, dude, like you're going to be living under a bridge in a cardboard box. I have proof under this bridge. Oh my I'm going to release it. Oh <laughs> So, okay, this uh, this is this thing funny, but I'm gonna say it anyway because it's kind of funny. There was a man, no lie, on the corner. He had a shopping cart, and all his effects was in it. Probably had a sign. <laughs> this ain't funny, but I'm gonna say it anyway. It said, "I like beer," and that's probably what he want money for, right? Yeah. He's not saying yeah. I'm blessing for I'm his a, honesty. I'm a vet and all this type. No, I no. like. Beer. I very cavernous, I understand, but he, yeah. I like beer. That's what his sign said. That yeah. man got more money than Mike Linda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's true. The, the people I, you know have seen on the on the streets like, holding signs will work for food. Mike will, Linda will lie for food. I mean, that's that's all he can that's do. Cool. He'll, he'll lie for food. At this so, point. So I mean, at this point, they're probably. I don't know if people are bringing lawsuits against him because he has unpaid bills to the warehouse, to Fox News, to his lawyers. I mean, Fox News. Was a man five million dollars or whatever it was when the whole election thing and all. So, <clears throat> so um, I I don't even I don't even Johnny help me out here. I don't even. <laughs> like really funny but it's very sad at the same time it, no it's completely funny it's completely funny because here again when you had 10 million dollars and it shrunk to eight you should have stopped there yeah and then when it shrunk to five you should have stopped there yeah. when you couldn't Ooh. make ends meet anymore you should have stopped there when you had to sell your stores when people started kicking you out of their stores when fox news said you couldn't advertise anymore you should have stopped there but you kept going until you reach the edge of the cliff and then you jump down. <laughs> and then at the bottom of that cliff was this. <laughs> <laughs> you can I can't feel sorry for you. There are people who are dealt very bad hands in life. You were not one of those people. No. You did this willingly over and over and over mm. again. Mm. Donald Trump does not care for you or about you. And you spent your entire fortune and your reputation to defend something that was false. You know the election was not stolen, but in here there's some wire that's touching that shouldn't be and one that's not yeah. touching that should be. And so I can't feel sorry for you. I always am curious about his financial future because it gets worse and worse. Like now he's a victim, what's next? And he still has his lawsuits for Smartmatic and, and Dominion. It's like, so he's got legal fees in front of him. Um, thank you, Lisa, for the super chat. I, I, you're you're better off trying to get water out of a rock <laughs> than Mike Lindell when, at this point. Where does he live? When's his house going to be like confiscated and auctioned yeah. off? <laughs> I, 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 okay, okay. Here's, here's, here's my angle, and this is what we can ask. Okay. If you were doing a reading for him, he couldn't pay you, but if you were doing a reading <laughs> for him, <laughs> what would you advise him on? What would you say? What would your card say to him if he came to you and said, I'm destitute at this point? Mm. I have I've been evicted from this. These people won't do business with me. Those people won't do business with me. My reputation has been destroyed. Like he's coming to you on the desperate of times. Like this is his 11.59 hour right now. What well, would you what I'd say probably is. Move in with your sister-in-law if she'll have you and offer to do lots of childcare because then you'll leave. <laughs> and the Cut some grass on the weekends or something. Uncle Mike's looking after you for the next two years. <laughs> you know, okay. Okay. When For those learning tarot, 
-hmm. In a personal reading, you do not leave a person on a low note. Even if the reading was the worst it could possibly be, yeah. give them some sort of tools on maybe what they can do to turn something around. Or mm -hmm. even the tower in the Ten of Swords has bright spots to where, okay, yeah. that's over, but you can start something new. Da -da -da. His is that kind of reading. It starts with the Five of Cups. There is loss and regret. That's probably him and some local dive yeah. somewhere. Just I can't anymore. But this again, a, re <laughs> a regret is something you put forward. It's something you did. But I don't even think he's in that mode right now to no. where he regrets it. Now he's just suffering the loss. The word of warning, the Six of Pentacles, there is no money coming in and you will be at some point begging and submitting. Everybody in that card is not giving. Some people have to beg. Some people have to submit. That's your future. Now, if I was to try to spin that, though, I would tell that person that now is the time to make new. Forget all of that that you have just done for the past three, four, five years. It's over. It's done. You can't pay this. You can't pay that. They can't yank it out of you. You don't have it. Try to make something new of yourself. That's what I would say, but I don't think it's going to happen. Just just from me to you. I don't think it's going to happen. His timing card is Seven of Swords. Somebody's already absconded with everything that he could use to rebuild. His reputation's gone. That's what he needed the most. The money can be replaced. His reputation is gone. And and with you saying that, Johnny, look at everybody that's been around Trump that's been a sycophant. Yep. Laura, Mc, Laura, Ronna McDaniel will mm. more than likely never be hired again as a public figure because she's a liability. Mm. Fox News just paid out seven hundred and something million dollars for lying on behest of an orange clown. And that's They're not false story. learners, though. They <laughs> might think they're on for a minute. You know, I mean, if she tried to do a podcast, who the hell is going to listen? They don't like you. Same thing with Mike Lindell. Nobody, they don't like you. Mm -hmm. so I would tell him, you got a loop running over and over and over in your head. In other words, he's got some mental issues. Um, and the only way to get healing is to go to a healer. You know, the, the only way that you can fix this is get in some therapy, you know, get in a rehab place, whatever, find some balance again, because everything you're doing is just oh, look at uh, those feeding, feeding the addiction, you know, and, and killing yourself. Basically, you're stabbing yourself in the back. Um, so there there's some that can offer help that but you have to move into action to seek it. It's not just going to be thrown at you. The, the help for your anxiety, you probably need some medication. This is my apothecary card. You probably need somebody to give you a prescription here. But he needs a lobotomy. It's, at yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it starts with him. Well, Johnny asked, what would you read for this person if you were reading a personal read? It starts with him. He doesn't accept help. He puts yeah. himself out in the cold. Yeah, uh, yeah. He doesn't. You know, so he's doing it to himself, and it, it's like as long as you're doing that, it's just going to get worse. Mm. Well, I've got him. <laughs> Same card you had, Jen. Here, he's now. It's it's now penetrated, and he is finally worried. He's carrying the burden but he's also is the burden to other people because when these guys with lots of money go down they start draining all their networks around them so you know what i mean like mm -hmm. and, and he's got employees which is a problem right now mm -hmm. for him yeah. no one likes him anyway because he's a boring guy apart from being everything else you know he thinks he'll be able to move away Start something new, maybe smaller pillows or something, you know, because it hasn't got a huge imaginative brain. The problem is wherever he goes, his debts are going to follow him. He owes for what he's taken wherever he goes because he's incapable basically, not that I'd say this to a person in a personal reading, of making that leap. We shouldn't write anyone off. Any person should be capable of redemption, but I'd put him in the... Class A category of not likely. <laughs> 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 
because he won't turn from it. Remember, Michael Cohen gets the pass now. He's still in his heart, still the same person who asked me because he could revert back to such a thing. But he did the mea culpa tour, which means he turned and went yes. the other way. He didn't continue to double down on I'm Donald Trump's pet anymore. And that's the essence of his redemption. Mm -hmm. and and Mike Lindell didn't get that it means, and he, I think he meant it when he said it. Because I think with Cohen, he was leading a double life. Mm -hmm. So he's a successful lawyer connected to his rabbi and his community and, you know, the father of two and all, and then doing this really nasty stuff for the day job, right? Um, and then his world's collided with mm. being arrested. So I think because he already had all that else in place, he was successful in being able to oh, redeem boy, himself no. with mm -hmm. that because he wasn't unanchored. He'd, he'd I, taken himself there, but he could come back to the anchor. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for a good redemption story. Sure. You know, and I think Lena had it straight with Michael Cohen. Because, I mean, if he didn't have that support system that, like you were saying, the anchor of his family, he would have just been another Mike Lindell, another yeah. Rudy Giuliani, another yeah. one of these clowns that talk about hot, hard life lessons. Mike Lindell was an addict at one point, living on the street, addicted to crack cocaine or whatever the hell it was, built himself a company selling extraordinary lumpy, lumpy yeah. pillows and made himself a millionaire. Mm. That's and an amazing then, story if it stopped there. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And, then, <laughs> and then he blew it all up for a person that doesn't know his name, doesn't yeah. care who he is, wouldn't yeah. help pay his legal fees. He's worthless because you didn't, you couldn't help me at, on my end. So, yeah, so. yeah, like trash. I just, and and what's sad about the whole thing is like, this is life punching you in the face to wake mm. up. And he's still like, I have the evidence. It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm waiting for when Trump forgets Lara Trump's name. <laughs> oh my God, we're going to happen. Laurency, who just launched a, or just we're gonna look released at another on oh her God, country Jenny, music. Jenny sent me the, the video. I listened to like 20 seconds. I'm like, I can't. This is like, she sounds like a nasty, mangy alley cat in heat, dude. I can't. <laughs> on on, on auto-tune. <laughs> and that's with auto-tune. It was awful. Um, so Mike Lindell, losses. <laughs> Lots of losses, anxiety, and stress. Boot licking and where you're putting your loyalties and your trust and your love ain't working. The trust and the loyalty is not there, nor you should. It is not reciprocated here mm. with the heart in the middle. It's not reciprocated. Move on. Mm. Like, mm. just just let it. Or you're going to be living under a bridge mm. In, mm. in the back of a pickup truck with your one lumpy pillow, <laughs> not being able to put gas in it. So There's your bus fare. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, on that box right there. And I like beer on the side. Yeah. <laughs> so Laura Trump. She's gonna ah. be she's gonna be like Taylor Swift, Jenny. I'm telling you. Oh, I'm telling her Laurency <laughs> now because you know they're they're criticizing Beyonce for getting into country music, and then there's Laura Trump Laurency, I'm calling her because yeah, you know, she's obviously had boob implants and, and trying to be all sexy every time she's at Mar a Lago. It's like, God, uh, you can also say this too, because um, it's it's on the internet. Somebody has said it already, of course, but I want to say it too. You want her to stay in her lane. Um, she is, first of all. Music does not belong to people, to anyone, to anyone in particular. But if you want to go there, Country music is an offshoot of gospel music and jazz and R&B and all that, which was primarily a genre of music by African Americans. So if you want her to stay in her lane, I think she is. Maybe yeah. you're in her lane. Not, not to mention the banjo was invented in Africa. So I just, I just keep, keep that correct. Country music does not belong to white people. I just want to say that. If I may tune in with my idiotic, uninformed, ignorant two cents here. 
I don't listen to mainstream radio. I couldn't tell you a Taylor Swift song. I couldn't tell you a Beyond. I've never heard them. I don't listen to that stuff. But in my mind, I'm thinking elitist white lady with fake boob that lives in a multi-million dollar house who's never stepped foot on a ranch must much less probably ever ridden a horse in her life is singing country music like isn't that a bit <laughs> i don't know it's a bit it's try old. hard if nothing else beyonce's <laughs> from houston she's from texas so she wants to sing texas hold them you go for it girl <laughs> i just don't understand like is it because in her mind that's where MAGA is? Is like the country folks. I'm thinking there must have been some direction there because isn't she from New York like the rest of them? Yes, that's yeah. what I'm saying. You yeah. could spend a lot of time in New York without finding country music in a um, Beyonce uh, performed at the Country Music Awards, and a lot of the artists, not a lot, a few of them, not protested, but they posted on Twitter that she should stay where she is. And a slight, a slight, a slight benefit to their point. Country music awards is all they have. You don't see a lot of country music artists on the BET awards or the Billboard awards or the mm, MTV music yeah, awards yeah. or the Grammy. Yeah, and so they're like, leave those spots for our people to do their country music thing, not the Beyonce, who is a hard beat pop star. But at the same time, it does not belong to you. So, yeah, JT did Justin Timberlake did a duet with um, Chris Stapleton on the Country Music Awards one year and blew up huge. It was huge. It was a just a phenomenal performance and everything. He's not country music, and they embraced him. Nobody criticized him for coming on it. I'm sorry, you know anybody. You got Hootie from Hootie and the Blowfish. What's his name? Um, Darius Rucker. Um, there's a, a, a black woman that's uh, growing now in country music. I can't think of her name. Pretty woman. Um, it doesn't belong. Charlie Pride back in the 60s. Country music does not belong to white people. I'm sorry. No, it belongs to everyone. <laughs> what I find funny about the whole thing is, like Lena was saying, she's a New Yorker. And when I was listening to the 20 seconds of that song before I turned it off, you can hear her trying to fake a country accent twang. Oh that song. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm saying Johnny. She's, she's from like, North Carolina, though. So she may have a little bit of a southern accent. But you listen to her lying on Fox News. She does not have an accent, Jenny. But when she's singing, it's like she's trying to slowly introduce an accent. And it's like home girl no that's that's as fake as the tits on your chest honey like you know like <laughs> sorry to be it's, so it's like forward, the but... dixie fix which goes by the chicks now when they spoke out against george bush and country music fans got all pissed off and, yeah, and yeah. you know blackballed them so to speak in in country music and they're back now and by the way that's who beyonce was performing with when she uh performed on the cmas yeah so, so. And then there's Keith Urban, who married Nicole Kidman, right? And Keith Urban comes from Caboolture, which is about five miles from where I grew up. Like, oh, God. <laughs> mm. But people love Keith Urban. Yeah. I couldn't watch a Keith Urban concert if you paid me $1,000 a minute. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I just, I just can't. I mean, bless her heart for thinking she. Does, does she do an album? Is that what we're reading on? Does yes, she, she just did an album, Johnny. When we, when, when we're done with the show, go back through the text messages and listen. To I just tried to find it. I don't have. I delete my messages every day. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll resend it to you because it's on, it's on my phone. But oh my God, was it bad? I was like twenty seconds. I'm, I can't take anymore. I clap out. <laughs> I clap out. This whole word was something about a Pegasus. And I'm like, who the hell wrote her lyrics? Like, was it well, Julie Ohio? Drugs, like, I'm a <laughs> you know, like, what the? I, hell? I can't even remember the name of the song. It was so bad, I had to send it to Becca and Johnny. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jen. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> so I like my, to share my suffering. <laughs> <laughs> my first question is, who writes her lyrics? Because after like only 20 seconds, I thought it was 
Don Jr. high on cocaine writing her lyrics for her. <laughs> <laughs> so who writes the lyrics to her songs? A MAGA songwriter. Probably Kid Rock or somebody. <laughs> oh, God. Another washed up meth head? No, thanks. <laughs> you have produced like me having a good one this year. <laughs> Could it be Don Jr.? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Someone in the okay, chat still on YouTube. That. Eric that was, Bird. Oh, sorry. That was rough. I won't yeah. back down. Is that the new one? Oh Jesus, Christian! No, that that's... was no, that was the first one. That's a oh, that that's is, a that Tom. Horrible too. That's a Tom Petty song, which Trump kept using at his rallies, and and he was told to quit doing that. Um, and he yet he still did it. But they love Tom Petty. Uh... It, whoever it is, they're they're definitely probably induced. Um, I get it's a Republican that's paid well to write from a, oh, uh, yeah, I got a dogmatic standpoint. There's certain things we want to um, uh, show how burdened we are. And uh, it, it, there's dogmatic principles behind it. So they're writing to an image, you know. Yeah, it's to an not image they want to portray. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I got someone who's already had success, major success, being commissioned to push the line. They're getting paid for it and they go, oh, look, you know, whatever, you know, what it's like for musos, it's really hard to make a crust. <laughs> Manages to turn lead into gold on some level. <laughs> <laughs> He's not gonna uh, win song of the year, that's for sure. <laughs> that was my that was gonna be one of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's Channing Gold into lead. Writes a really good song and she kills it. You know. Um, there's a man here. He accompanies the moon. He has let's say great imagination. <laughs> um and then there's the Nine of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles. He lays claim to her work, though. So there may be a bit of an issue with the Two of Cups and the Word of Warning about publishing fees or publishing rights or something of that nature. I mean, are you arguing over the two albums that you sold and both of them were to Eric? So it's <laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> I get um, someone... If you had you have the child in the uh, mountain, I'm going to laugh because that's Kid Rock. <laughs> yeah. There's a kid. Gifted. And then mentoring. So I'm wondering if like she's working with someone that's around a kid or someone that's younger um, mm -hmm. that offered. There's some sort of an offer here for guidance or mentoring. So... Mm -hmm. Let's see you write a song about boycotting Bush beer or whatever next, you know? So, so is she, is she going to get, cause you all know she wants to be like, you know, up there like super status. So is she, is she going to get any awards for any of her albums? Oh, surely not. I mean, America's in crisis, but really. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think Cheryl would though. even be in I don't think he would even be invited to perform on an award show. No, <laughs> I haven't seen her perform on TV anywhere except for uh, in interviews with Fox and with uh, somewhere in Australia that she did an interview and sang. And it was like, oh, my God, without the autotune, it's even worse. <laughs> it was like one of those times where I was wondering where that guy is on that show for the singers. What is it? America's Got Is it America's Got Talent or... That it's one of them. There's lots Simon of them. Yeah, the guy that's really mean. Like, that's yeah. who you need to just tell her, girl, you suck. Give it the up. Yeah. Um, Apollo Theater. What was, what was the show called, though? Was it Uptown at the Apollo? Upshine? Uptown? Something. This was a thousand years ago. You come out and sing in the Sandman. If the card that the crowd started to boo you long enough, 
he would come out and like dance you off the stage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those know. were the days. <laughs> and a hard audience. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. I think, will she get an award? Okay, here's the thing. For, for perspective. Will she get national recognition like the MTV or the Billboard or the Grammys or something like that? No. But can she get the shot glove, you know, shotgun anonymous awards or something like that? Some little local thing that Republicans like and Republicans sponsor? Sure. Mm -hmm. Because with the with the with the hangman, there's a perspective that needs to be had. She's not gonna get public recognition because she sucks, like literally. <laughs> the Ten of Wands and the Will of Fortune, they can put pressure on some sort of local thing in order to recognize her because this would be good for her image. So this would all be orchestrated, a lie, aka, but it would be orchestrated. So, so what you're saying is she's going to be touring with NASCAR to sing the national anthem. <laughs> Did y'all see the video of that little girl singing the national anthem? Oh, good God. And she's Christian Rock. Dress yeah. on. Oh, my God. So what I was hearing, it's like Trump winning his, his golf own award. Golf. Okay. <laughs> you know, he, and he, Biden was like, good job, Donald. You know? <laughs> was it he, was, was he if she buys it, she'll win an award. <laughs> if she pays for it, right now it's like, yeah, no, you know, your singing is too burdened. Uh, if she pays somebody overseas, I think she could. You know, she might fifty-fifty chance she might win one. <laughs> I like to thank the Academy. <laughs> the Academy in Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Yeah, I can totally see her doing, you know, twenty-first birthdays for princelings or something. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, oh my god. Okay. Did you go, Lena? No. Mm, with this, someone giving the little girl a prize. <laughs> but he's a clown, you know. Thanks for turning up. And her father in law has to pay people to come. <laughs> Please come listen to her. I'll, I'll give you earplugs so you can sit there. For the whole time. <laughs> and she thinks she's a triumph and a success in every way. She's and then the sun night. in the form of the tiger leaps out. I think that's when the auto tune falls out halfway through a performance <laughs> and the sun shines, shines on her absolute and real talent. Oh my wow. God. She's you know, I just gotta hope that like the whole Trump family gets together and does an audio book on the Trump Bible. <laughs> can you imagine Melania <laughs> book, reading too big? Can you can you imagine Melania reading that? That, that Bible. Oh, mm -hmm. I heard her read Michelle Obama's speech once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <she practiced> <laughs> well, we all know Donald Trump couldn't do it because it doesn't have any pictures. So. Yeah. <laughs> I get a no. I get a big old fat no. Yeah, no, I don't think they'll be. I mean, but so she's been seeing at Mar-a-Lago crashing weddings like her dad, like her like her father-in-law. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. Try to get up on set. Yeah, next thing he'll be grifting off of his earplugs. <laughs> oh, my God. So, speaking of the grifter, I got a couple petty questions as we're heading into the end here. Yep. Why are the pages of the Bible sticking? That's what everybody wants to know. No, back to the beginning of this, but. In my <laughs> mind, I'm thinking it's because of, of the gilded edges. The gilded not... sticks. Yeah. But just to be petty, why? why... Bible. Pages are thinner, very thin, you know, so they static also. But most of the Bibles open. <laughs> like this so one why are the Bible pages sticky? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh, no. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to open. They shouldn't open. It's not a 
it's a Bible, but if I say the words, it's not a real Bible. Maybe you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, there's the four of pentacles. That would be something that is held together. There's the mm -hmm. death card. This, 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 yes, it may just be the gilding, but mind you, I didn't get a card about materials. This is more of a, maybe a sign or a symbol that you need to change course. The eight of cups, the death, and the chariot. There is a different kind of spiritual practice, and this may have nothing to do with the Bible period. This is just a message to put out there. There's a different kind of spiritual practice that you must partake in because you are following the wrong person down the wrong path. Never mind that you bought a Bible. It's who you bought it from and why you bought it. You bought it because you want to support a person who is for the tearing down of everything. And that is not what you are supposed to be doing with your spiritual life yeah. so the pages are sticking symbolically because there is nothing in between them this is empty this is yeah. a dead pause the lord's name in vain people usually think that means don't say the word jesus christ in the form of a swear word the lord's name in vain means don't call yourself christian without fruit vain means fruitless and so don't call yourself Christian and you don't live a Christian life. Don't do follow a man who can't even hold the Bible the right side up. What do you mean hating people and these and these invaders and, and the sick people? What, what do you mean? That's not hate. That's what Jesus told us to do, damn it, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> It's oh, the bully card that, and I heard Bible thumpers, Bible thumpers, people that are yeah. going to like put that in your face all the time in image only and mm -hmm. colluding together with other people to try to, you know, get to a holier than thou attitude. Um, it's, it's done as justice. It's, it's mm -hmm. done um, because the strength of the word of the Bible, um, they're, they're not taking it in. They're, they're burdened to take it in. They can't take it in. Their spirit is not open to the word. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Right, yeah. Ready? Well, there's another story. I don't know if it's true or not, that these um, fake Bibles, we could say quite safely here, um, <laughs> were actually produced in 2021 or something, and they've been dug out. Has anyone else heard that? <laughs> but in any event, they were cheap then. This is producing the actual physical book, flying by the seat of their pants, tying themselves in knots how to cut corners and save money. And as I said at the top of the show, what's the betting it was made in China? Someone should blow that up as a meme, you know, if it must say somewhere where it is published. Then they get the chariot and the death card like you got, Johnny. You know, I mean... They're being asked over and over to question their own fidelity to this man and they keep missing every opportunity to do it. You know, and in the end, they're the ones being ripped off of their own faith. And thank you for bringing that up because I did not know what this meant. So I got the, not that I didn't know what it meant. I didn't realize what it was saying, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. The storks, the lilies, the birds, the scythe, and the mountain. These are old, bringing back something old. The return of mm. something old, old. Mm. The birds here was throwing me off. I didn't get that. This was the person that made these Bibles was a singer. Mm. I didn't get that. So uh, this is the thing. <laughs> he doesn't sing anymore, though, followed by Scythe. Uh, and then the mountain blocked, delayed. This is so this is like the reason that they're sticking out because it's old stock. That's this person couldn't move. This person that yeah, sang couldn't move yeah. and it's been blocked, delayed, just sitting there. Sitting like there for a years. Mountain, a mountain of, of, of books that are old, if that mm. makes sense. So Coming out of his own house, he probably has them stored in a barn out back. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And books are heavy. And if you leave them on top of each other for years, that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So ah. here's here's my next question. Oh. So now, 
Trump has sold pieces of his suit. <laughs> the suit that he was indicted with, selling pieces of his suit. He has sold sneakers. Now he's selling American Bibles. American Bibles, uh, what was the word that they used, Jenny? Endorsed by him. So yeah. all the other Bibles are crap except the one that he's <laughs> <laughs> so when you got Which Trump, contains the Constitution, Bible. which he wants to nullify when he becomes president. It's like, why do you have it in the Bible? <laughs> I mean, you can't, the irony is dead. Irony is dead. And it, so. Don't forget his superhero cards. Oh, yeah, oh. the NFT cards. Oh, and his mug shots, which said never surrender to the person that surrendered. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so, okay. The mug shot t-shirts, the suit, the shoes, the Bible. What was the other one, Jenny? You just mentioned it. The, like, NFT. the cards. The, the NFT, NFT cards. cards. The stupid yeah. MAGA hats. The Trump bucks. The Trump bucks. That wasn't his, but still Trump bucks. What's he going to sell next? <laughs> well, it comes on the back of all the things he's done before, like Trump water and Trump steaks and... Oh, Magazine. Ay, ay, ay. Clorox Trubles, I'm telling you. I cannot believe that dumbass was selling pieces of his damn suit. That, that had to be one of the funniest pieces <laughs> of his suit. And also, they wouldn't be that suit, and how would you know? And exactly. everything about it, you know, he'd sell a million pieces of the. But he bought the bolt of fabric and started cutting it up. That's all he did. Uh, the only way you'd know it was his suit is if it smelled. And how can people look at this and go, yep, that's my guy? <laughs> Like what other president in the 250 year history of this country has done half the clown assery that this guy did Bush sell pieces of his suit that he was indicted in? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, did Washington have to sell pieces of his suit that he was indicted in? No. Uh -huh. And this you is know? the thing, he's so Lincoln, unclassy. You, you know, it's, it's just tacky trash. beyond belief. But here's no. the thing. Because the name is everything, you know, that's his identity and his world and his brand, literally, and all of that. It's an unusual name, you know. So apart from Mary Trump, who's outside the family uh, paradigm, you know, you don't hear of many Trumps. So I what's going to happen to the name? I suppose now they've got little Trumps, but will they have to change their names? I case? would. I wouldn't want to be associated with that national disaster embarrassment that everybody in the free world despises you. Like, no, I would change my whole identity. <laughs> I'd be like, I don't know who these people are. Um, what's he going to sell next, Johnny? Make it good. It's a collector's item. Nine of Cups, Seven of Cups, Queen of Pentacles. But... Nice. It's produced by a company that either sells dirt or um, fertilizer or something like that. Like that's not the only thing they sell, but that may be the thing that they they sell the most of. Um, there's some kind of collector's item, but it's it's either from the ground or it's a company that specializes in dirt. Or maybe even golf courses, but it's it's dirt. It's a land thing that they specialize <laughs> in. Dirt from Ivana's grave. <laughs> it, this thing is it's like like a cup of something or a package of something. So it's it's oh. something you can keep. Oh, okay. But it's oh, it's, it's basically it's worth it. cups. That's very it might weird. be worth three dollars at the most, and it's probably selling for sixty, seventy, eighty dollars or something. It's a trick. Yeah. Oh, this is foreign company too. Mm. Lena, so, to answer your question, someone in the I was gonna say it earlier, somebody in the chat was saying that back when the Trumps were in Germany, that wasn't their real name. It was Trump. Yeah, <laughs> and they changed it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm getting something that it's treasonous that he stole corruptly. <laughs> But he's going to oh, turn it into an abundance of pieces. So he's going to cut up documents, I think, things that he has. Oh, uh, he's gonna, he's got, he's, something he's been indicted for. <laughs> he's going to, like, give you options on it. Like, he's going to cut up a bunch of documents. Stolen documents. 
Oh, I love that. Or here's page one, here's page five. <laughs> or yeah. photocopies of it. Like he's going to do it abundantly. So maybe photocopies documents and sells them. I am convinced that he stole that stuff to sell it. Not just to not just to undermine. But the the overseas too. Uh huh. I mean, the, I, there's a part of me that's like, there's no way he could be that stupid. But then there's a part of me that's like, girl, he is beyond that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think he understands the concept of a secret or a classified document still to this day, despite going on trial for it. I don't think he understands what it means. No, and this is why, in his defence, in his defence, why he doesn't understand what it means to keep a secret or classified documents is because they didn't make them sign an NFT. Yeah. You know, if they would have said, okay, here's an NFT, you gotta keep your mouth shut, you would have been like, oh, okay. Because mm -hmm. he's he's very well versed in doing that to shut other people up. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So I got weird cards. He hasn't decided yet with the Seven of Cups and there's so many options. <laughs> okay. Then um, I got this one, the, the Eight of Cups. So I think it's going to be multiple things at the same time. Look at this page of coins. With, he's selling ice cream, selling drinks. So it's <laughs> maybe like that. It'll be like Jen says, parts of documents, or you can buy the golf balls, you can buy the golf clubs, you can buy <laughs> the, the, the cup of dirt from Bedminster. Or before. He could keep ahead of each property that gets repossessed. You can have your piece now before it goes. <laughs> oh, my God. So I think he's going to do more of this because he is shameless. No. You're absolutely right. You can have a piece of it while I still own it. <laughs> can you imagine Mar-a-Lago with the, with the yard sale signs? <laughs> brick by brick. Brick by brick. Just take it apart. <laughs> I'm with Jenny. There's the whip. The tower. So that's something that he's fighting in the courts for. Uh -huh. Investigations and fraud. Uh -huh. News that's cancelled or not uh, that he was trying to stop, that he's trying to stop. I'm with Jenny. It's something that ha that's around his legal stuff uh -huh. that he's uh -huh. currently in court for that he's going to try to sell. <laughs> so maybe more mug shots. Maybe, maybe somebody See judge... Marshawn will say, you know what? I'm done with you. <clears throat> We're throwing your ass in jail pending trial. I and think he's going to prove that he still has documents, you know, the secret closet and all that, because he's going to tell on himself. He's going to photograph them and then start auctioning them, yeah. selling them off. Yeah. It you. was the same with the Angeron case. Yeah. He kept saying, they they undervalue my properties, you know, mar a lagos worth 111 million or something, which is the wrong thing to say if you don't want to be convicted of that crime and you're trying to get your tax down. It's like he can't keep it straight. I think, I think there's a part of me that thinks that he's completely lost his mind and can't keep it straight. And there's another part of me that thinks his narcissism is so bad that he will not, regardless of how bad it is for him That's in right. the end, he will not admit to it because he's playing to his audience. Both. That whole thing that Mind happened. You, when you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory because the story is the same. Exactly. So, like when all that stuff that happened in Judge and Goron's courtroom was self-inflicted because he wanted to go in there and perform for his base. Yeah. And that's why he got the fine that he did. Had he just walked in there and just been like, "I screwed up. I'm sorry," it wouldn't have been this bad. But then, at to Lena's point, he can't go in there and say, "Well, it was only uh, appraised at nine million because then that takes away. The facade that he's and mistake been, and you know, it, so he's been doing all of this clownery to appease to a tiny, tiny group of mm. people that when the poop hits the fan, they can't help you. They're not people in high places, and you can only squeeze that rock so much before the well runs dry. And you know, mama and papa ain't gonna have two cents to send you. To and they've you stopped sending you. money, it's yeah. stalled. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they're getting sick of being asked because if you're one of his, you imagine how often you get inundated to give they them. They were saying that on Mighty's touch. That the emails are sick of it. 
20, 30 <laughs> emails a day. I, you know, I, if I get two emails from a website, I block it <laughs> or unsubscribe. Yeah, it. I don't even Every time you go to the grocery store, do you want to donate to the this? Do you want to donate to the no? Yeah. I don't. I just want a Cheeto and a Sprite and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I might get the occasional email from Gavin Newsom or the DNC or whatever. But from what I'm hearing, the people that are on Truth Social or or anything where they ha where they have their email address, it's like 20, 30 messages a day asking yeah. for money. Like, how do you not see that? If you had somebody knocking on your door yeah. 30 times a day to try to sell you something, how long would it take you to say, okay, that's enough? This yeah. is what bullshit are you selling? These people are I think people. they are quietly getting sick of it, but it's very hard to admit you've been this wrong for Dude. this long. You go. know, and they don't, but they're quietly. Let's just hope they don't vote. They're not going to. Yeah. Well, I mean, he keeps telling them not to vote. He doesn't need the votes. Oh, that's so. another awesome tactic. When you <laughs> <laughs> we don't need the votes. You don't need to vote. Don't worry about it. Statistician, he is not. Yes. And look. I'm, I'm Him just saying we don't need the vote tells me he thinks he's got it rigged somewhere bad. where he yeah. doesn't need the vote. He that the last time, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, I mean, I there, I just I just look at him. He's how old? 73, 74 years old? How, yeah. If that man is this stupid, how the hell did he manage to live this long is what I want to know. Because, like, <laughs> like his diet. He even dressed him and wheeled him out. <laughs> He hasn't oh had God. an independent action for 50 years. Oh, my God. Oh. We had almost 2,400 people joining us on Easter tonight. That well, is so Easter cool, people. guys. Happy Easter. Happy Ostara. Uh -huh. oh, I forgot to mention at the beginning, Sacred Sounds of Coffee is Friday morning at 10. Uh, I think we're on Gail's channel this time, but I'll post on my community tab. I can't remember. And Spirits Beyond the Stars says MAGA followers, they've been known to mortgage their homes and sell their cars to give Trump money. Oh, I'm sure that's not the majority, but if there were two, that's bad. Yes. No, but, but here's the thing. In 2016, he was railing against the elites. Yeah, that was his whole shtick. That was his whole shtick. Meanwhile, he's part of that class of people fraudulently, but he's part of that class of people. So if you're sitting there going, yeah, screw the elites, but you're mortgaging your house to help a billionaire, what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, and look, exactly. At some point, you can't just call it, you know, clever grift and even manipulation. It is so crude. And yeah. so out there, it's like the worst of the um, prosperity. Because in their, their mind, the word 90. successful and elite are two different things. Elite is Obama. Successful is Trump. Uh, okay. That, and if he's so successful, why you got to mortgage your house to help him? There you go. <laughs> you <laughs> why he got to sell all his businesses to come up with $454 million when he's supposed to be And we, we didn't even get a chance to read on that because he still hasn't paid the reduced the reduced amount. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they gave him 10 days, but he still hasn't paid it. He said he it. Even it. after the appeals, he's still going to owe the four four fifty. You know? Yeah, but then what's he's got to reduce from the seventy five means is he gets an appeal, mm -hmm. and then there's a really good chance that appeal's going to go. Oh, the first one was a bit harsh. We'll knock it down. You watch. But it's in the still tradition that we have now come to expect. <laughs> Yeah, but he had 10 days to come up with that 175. Which I think is Wednesday or something, because the original one was Monday, so 10 days would have to be Wednesday, Thursday. Mm -hmm. Of this week? It'd be, yeah. it'd be funny if uh, it was tomorrow on April Fool's. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, you're dumbass, Box. You're dumbass. He's like, here's my payment. Here's my payment. I got the money. <laughs> Pay it on April. <laughs> you know, can you believe the, the kittens are going to be two years old on Tuesday? Can you oh, believe no, they're the teenagers. I still call them kittens, but they're they're two years old. Oh, they'll always be the kittens. Yeah, Happy they birthday will. to Chaos Mayhem and Pandemonium and the mommy over there. <laughs> <laughs> the babies. Well, guys, thanks for having me on. Thank you, Thank you so much. So much.
And thank you for everybody tonight. Happy giant rabbit day. That's what I call it. <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> Eat all the chocolate you want. That's the reason. Don't forget to go to the store tomorrow and get all the candy on sale. Because that's what I'm going yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Ciao, everyone.